Good day, folks. Everything new under the sun. Today, I want to do something a little bit different and look at the different names of Jesus. I think this is a bit of an interesting uh, study, an interesting look at what do the names mean? Jesus, Jesus, Joshua, Joshua, Yeshua, are these, uh, Yehoshua, are these all the same names for Jesus Christ, the Christ that we know uh, from our Bible? So when, uh, uh, you know, rabbi scholars, um, uh, rabbis, rather, uh, and Hebrew scholars uh, refer to Yehoshua, um, Yeshua. Are they referring to Jesus exactly? Well, we're going to take a look at that. One correction I will make um, from the video yesterday, and I did post, as soon as I post the video, I realized um, the, the mistake I made about the, 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 uh, the Jewish year there. And I did uh, post a comment on my comments, uh, but a number of you guys caught it as well. Um, this is the, uh, the true year, the true Hebrew year is the year 5780. Um, so this is a Wikipedia article, and I mean, you can Google it, what is the current uh, Hebrew year, and uh, uh, and according to this, the current 2019 to 2020 Hebrew year is the year 5780, and that's the exact year that um, the rabbi uh, predicted as being the one where uh, there would be uh, no election. So we're right in the middle of that. It's right on time. And so, so there you go. 5780 is a year, and that's exactly when the rabbi uh, predicted uh, that the, it would be a year of uh, basically no elections. And it's, uh, you know, it's being fulfilled as is. And we expect uh, prophecies to come out of people who aren't even Christians, because in the last days, uh, we know that there'll be dreams and visions of all sorts of men, pointing them at the, at the Christ, at the Messiah, uh, at the Lord, and returning them to him. So 5780, um, so that's my correction from uh, the video yesterday. Um, I was watching something else about uh, when uh, year zero was, 4004 years BC. I'd like to uh, actually uh, kind of weave that into my keynote presentation. It seems like um, scholars seem to agree that it's 4004 years uh, before uh, you know, BC, before the Gregorian calendar, before the start of the Gregorian calendar, uh, which is when uh, Adam, uh, well, which is when creation uh, occurred, the six, six days of creation. And I think that's interesting that the, that they're very specific about that based on the, the chronologies of the Bible. Um, and so I want to kind of uh, add that to my timeline uh, and add to it um, how the Gregorian calendar date is off as well. I'll have to take a look at my keynote and see where we are with that, but I thought that was interesting, and I thought I, maybe that would be maybe a good be a good time to uh, uh, revisit um, when was creation. How does that fit into the larger six thousand year timeline? You notice that this Wikipedia article is about the year six thousand, and when does that exactly occur? And I believe the year six thousand occurs in the year twenty twenty eight. So maybe that's a video that I can uh, post. Maybe over the weekend, uh, I'll see if I have some videos where I've done that um, because I think it's very interesting to look at that um, as just another uh, feature and a very, very important feature to say, uh, you know, we are in the last days. We are coming upon um, the uh, last few years of, of human history, at least in this era on this earth prior to the millennial reign of Christ. All right. Jesus, Yeshua. Um, uh, Joseph. These are uh, all names um, that are actually uh, come from or can mean the same as uh, Jesus. Well, let's look at this. This is uh, etymologies. This is from wikipedia.com as well. And it goes over the etymology, the history, the background information as to where um, uh, the word Jesus comes from. Is it a transliteration? Is it a, a translation? Um, and there's transliterations and translations um, equally here. It says a typical Jew in Jesus' time had only one name, sometimes followed by a phrase, the son of, or individual's hometown. Thus, in the New Testament, Jesus is commonly referred to as Jesus of Nazareth, where they, where they grew up, where they were born. It says, um, uh, Jesus' neighbors in Nazareth refer to him as a carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, and uh, Hoses, Hoses, Joseph, um, and Judas, and Simon, the, uh, the carpenter's son, or Joseph's son. Now, Joseph is another uh, one that is a, a transliteration, translation uh, of Jesus, a, a variation, if you will. It says, the name Jesus derived 
from the Latin uh, lesus, uh, and it's a transliteration of the Greek uh, lesus. The Greek form is a rendering of the Hebrew Yeshua, a variant of the earlier name Yehoshua, or in English, Joshua. So you can see all these names, are, which are either transliterations or translations of the same word. And so when you look at these rabbis who have these predictions and they mention the name Yehoshua, Yeshua, um, they're all referring to really the same person because they're all, <clears throat> they're all the same name, basically. In English, uh, Joshua, uh, meaning Yah, saves. Um, this was also the name of Moses' successor uh, and of the Jewish high priest in the Old Testament. It says the name Yeshua appears to have been in use in Judea in the time of Jesus' uh, birth. Uh, it says, in the first uh, century, Flavius Josephus, who wrote in Koine Greek, the same language as uh, that of the New Testament refer to at least 20 different people with the name Jesus. The etymology of Jesus' name in context of the New Testament is generally given as Yahweh is salvation. So Yahweh is another uh, word for that. <clears throat> so that's, uh, I, I like to do videos where you kind of learn something, and I don't know if you've heard that before, um, the, 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 the fact that these names are basically all pointing to the same person ultimately. They're all translations or transliterations of the same. The more interesting part, well, similarly interesting, is that uh, when you look at characters in the Bible, such as uh, Joshua, such as Joseph, they're examples uh, of, uh, or, or um, uh, what, what's the word? Um, they're, they parallel in some, t in, uh, in some occasions. Um, the life of Christ. They, uh, they're they examples of, of Jesus uh, prior to Jesus being on the earth. And so you can... I don't know, there's a proper word for that. And I can't think of it right now. Um, but here's an article. Um, Joshua as a past life of Jesus Christ. Now, I think that's strongly worded. I don't think, you know, he's, um, Jesus isn't Joshua reincarnated. Uh, but we can see some parallels, some uh, uh, symbolism, some uh, things we can take from it. Um, and we can look at these, some of these leaders as um, uh, a, a pre-premonition. That's not the word. Uh, the word's right there. I, I'm sure you guys are going to put it in the comments. Um, pre, uh, uh, I can't think of the word. Anyways, it, it's uh, a character in the Bible. Um, that is an example, a pre-example, I'll use that word, uh, of, of Jesus or, or uh, someone who looks like or uh, is an example of Jesus who will uh, come. Uh, and so it says, according to the book of Exodus and Numbers, uh, the biblical character of Joshua, remember, remember back to our transliteration, translation, Joshua is uh, the same as Jesus, is mentioned in a few passages as Moses' assistant. Joshua is the central character in the Hebrew Bible's book of Joshua, who became a leader of the Israelite tribes. Now, when you take a look at the life of Joshua, you can see um, uh, some parallels to the life of Jesus and the, and the leader that came uh, became of uh, Jesus. According to Bible chronology, Joshua lived between 1500 and 1390 BCE, before Common Era. Uh, <clears throat> we would call that before Christ. Of course, they're trying to get rid of uh, before, and they're trying to get rid of Christ in all these uh, terms. Uh, or sometimes in the late Bronze Age, the several identical characters between Joshua and Jesus, including having the same Hebrew name uh, Yehoshua, which means Yahweh is salvation, having the same role as the leader of Israel, having the same mission of peace, having the same number of appointed men, 12, and having the same representations of 12 stones uh, for the appointed <clears throat> 12. So you can look at these various characters, uh, the Josephs in the Bible. Um, uh, Joseph and um, the coat of many colors, for example. Um, Joseph was uh, persecuted and he rose uh, to high stature in the kingdom. The second in the kingdom, in fact, and uh, that's where uh, Jesus will be. So Joseph uh, and the story of Joseph and his persecution and his rise to power uh, and providing food for all um, is, is an example um, uh, of uh, Jesus. <clears throat> um, now, they're, not, they're not perfect examples. They're just things that point you at Christ, that point you at the person of Jesus. And uh, Joshua is this other uh, person, a, a leader, a great leader 
um, who uh, prefigures um, the life of Christ and Christ uh, and Jesus being a great leader. So when you look at all these names in scriptures, um, Joshua, Joseph, um, Yeshua, you know, when you're reading things on jpost.com, Yehoshua, etc. These are all um, uh, the same uh, name as uh, Jesus Christ. Um, and uh, and you look at the, the characters, the biblical characters, and look at them from the standpoint of, um, you know, they aren't Jesus, but look at them from the standpoint and say, uh, read the book, read the story from the standpoint of them being uh, like Jesus, and you can see the parallels there. You can see the power. You can re- see the rise to power and and how they rule, uh, etc. And and so it's an interesting study. So um, I will leave it at that. I won't go too far into that. But like I say, I think it's uh, interesting um, to look at it. I'll, I'll look at this here. Is Jesus' real name actually Yeshua, follower of the Messianic Judaism, <clears throat> uh, Jews who accept Jesus Christ as a Messiah think so, and they're not alone. In fact, some Christians argue that those who refer to Christ as Jesus instead of his Hebrew name Yeshua are worshiping the wrong Savior. So are these people, are, are the rabbis worshiping a different Savior than Christians who worship Jesus Christ? These Christians believe that using the name of Jesus is like calling the Messiah the name of the Greek God Zeus. God Zeus. And of course, you'll know um uh, from what I just said, uh, you know that's not the, not the case at all. We di- we have different names, um, but they're all transliterations or translations of um, the same. It says, "Indeed, uh, Yeshua is the Hebrew name for Jesus, which means Yahweh, the Lord, is salvation." So throughout the Bible, you have these names of these uh, biblical characters who are uh, seem to be um, examples of, of of Jesus who will be who will come, <clears throat> and their name itself and and th- th- that the name wouldn't be lost on the people who were there seeing these leaders in that point in time. So the names of these people would be announcing that um, Jesus is salvation, Yahweh is salvation, the Lord is salvation. So uh, the Lord will always have a witness, and I think in all these leaders He has a witness. Even um, the father uh, of Jesus uh, was a name uh, that said, uh, Jesus Christ is salvation. Yahweh is salvation. So even uh, Joseph, the father of Jesus, um, uh, had a name pointing to Jesus Christ. It says this means Joshua and Jesus are the same names. One name is translated from the Hebrew and English. The other from Greek into English, it is also interesting to note that the names Joshua and Isaiah are essentially the same names as Yeshua in the Bible. They mean Savior and the salvation of the Lord. It says, given how translation factors into this debate, uh, must we call Jesus Yeshua? Think of it this way. It says, words for the same object are said differently across languages. While the dialect changes, the object itself does not. In the same way, so our names change, but the actual person uh, does not change. We just call them by different names. We can refer to Jesus by different names without changing his nature. The names from uh, him all means the Lord is salvation. So when the Jews uh, reference Yeshua, they're referencing the same person. They just don't recognize um, that Jesus Christ uh, was the Messiah and that he came already. In short, it says, those who insist uh, we exclusively call Jesus Christ Yeshua are overlooking the fact that how Messiah's name is translated is not essential to salvation. Um, I'm sure Jesus uh, doesn't so much care what you call him as long as you recognize him as Messiah. And now, of course, you can blaspheme the name of uh, Jesus and uh, and, uh, cause, uh, and uh, <clears throat> I use his name in vain, but if you're uh, using his name Uh, honestly, and are just trying to call upon his name, he will recognize that. English speakers call him Jesus with a J. Um, That sounds like G. Portuguese speakers uh, call him Jesus, but with a J, that sounds like a G. Uh, Ge. So, uh, Ge. And Spanish call him uh, Jesus with a name that sounds like, hey, yeah, like, so like Jesus. Um, I I guess uh, in Portuguese, they would uh, call him Jesus, uh, uh, Spanish, uh, Jesus, um, so same names there. Which one of these uh, pronunciations is the correct one? All of them, of course, in their own language. So, like, it, like I say, it's an interesting uh, word study and, and uh, translation and transliteration. These are all the same. 
<clears throat> and so uh, when you look at uh, the uh, the leader, the uh, the stories of the people in the Bible, Joshua, um, uh, uh, Jesus, um, what was the other one? Uh, Joseph. Uh, these significant books uh, in um, uh, the Bible. Um, sorry, I was just quieting uh, the phone there. These significant books in the Bible. And these men and these stories of uh, these these great leaders in the Bible, they all point back to Jesus, and Jesus will always have a witness. So it's an interesting uh, that throughout the Bible, all these names point back to uh, the person of Christ um, by name, and the people, um, the people, you know, probably knew what the name meant because what the name meant was uh, key to who that person uh, was. Uh, so all these uh, great leaders um, in some way point back to uh, the person of Christ. Anyways, I'll leave it there. Um, I'm sure there's probably uh, a lot of other great articles um, about how that points back, but when you're reading the book, when you're reading about um, Joshua, when you're reading about Joseph and the coat of many colors, think back to how that uh, relates to, reflects, uh, or parallels with um, uh, Jesus, with the life of Jesus, uh, with what he did in the big picture in saving the world where, you know, Joseph, uh, he was persecuted, he um, came to power, he was the second in command in Egypt, and he saved Egypt uh, uh, from a famine, from famine. My brain is fading. So he saved uh, Egypt from famine. He, he uh, helped them to save up for seven good years and, and uh, provided food for them in the seven bad years. So uh, pretty fascinating stuff. So anyways, I'll leave it there for today, guys. I thought that was an interesting uh, thing. Uh, like I say, my videos, I like to learn something and to share what I've learned with you so that we uh, continue to learn each day and continue uh, to be able to um, see different sty sides of uh, the scriptures as you read through it. And so the name of uh, Jesus, the um, name of Yeshua, and and this all plays in, of course, the anti-Bible prophecy because when you look at uh, these uh, these uh, rabbis, these mystical rabbis, etc., who are having visions, they're referring to, they're uh, using the word Yeshua, etc. So thanks for watching, folks. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.